What's going on, everyone? Happy Saturday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, and having a good weekend so far. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. And if you're sick with something else, I hope you feel better soon. It is time now for the Saturday edition of the Pandemic Update for Saturday, May 11th, 2024. I just mentioned, if you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery. But I also hope you quarantine, and unfortunately, you cannot participate in Mother's Day tomorrow. That means you need to quarantine, isolate yourself, because guess what? COVID is still a thing, and you need to continue to wear a mask. If you are new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID, any other virus that could be a health threat to you, CDC data, wastewater data, EMS data, and we even talk about some climate stuff from time to time. I'm trying to add a few more things in there because we don't have enough time to work on our other channel. And climate is a threat to life as well, as you will see in a climate story that I do have added for today. So if you're new to the channel, subscribe down below. Give this video a thumbs up. The more we hit that thumbs up button, the more YouTube will send this content out throughout the algorithm. Let's go above and beyond today. Let's try for 125 likes. Of course, share this with anyone you know. And if you have a comment on anything you see today, which is going to be a lot of stuff, a lot of uh, things to get through today, leave a comment down below. All right, we're just going to be reading a headline for the majority of these stories. There may be one or two where we go a little deeper into the story. First off, H5N1 continues to be a problem. Three more cats die of H5N1 bird flu in the U.S., including a pet cat. So, yes, H5N1 continues to be a problem. And, unfortunately, um, every, I think, all cats that have tested positive so far this year in the United States for H5N1 have died. So, that is relatively concerning. Staying with H5N1, I was going to show this later, but let's just keep it uh, together. The feds announced assistance for U.S. farmers affected by H5N1 bird flu. And it says, taken together, these tools represent a value of up to, it looks like it's going to be $28,000 per premises to support biosecurity activities over the next 120 days. I'm not seeing here precisely how much, um, how many million dollars that they're pointing out. There is another story. I'll tweet this whole story out. You can read the full thing. But the key takeaway here is that they are starting federal assistance for U.S. farmers from the Department of Agriculture and the Department of Health and Humane Services. All right, let's go international for a moment. This is not good. This is actually really bad. Majority of long COVID insurance claims rejected in Switzerland. As you know, somewhere between 20 to 30 percent of people who test positive for COVID go on to develop and have long COVID issues. It may start right away. It may start down the line. And in many cases, this can completely destroy their day-to-day -day activities. Several people have to quit their jobs. You know, when you have to do that, hey, the financial situation gets hard. Well, it's even harder when the majority of insurance claims over in Switzerland are being rejected. And I believe this is by uh, one individual insurance company. You can read this full story, but it says here, more than 60% of people with long COVID have been refused by invalidity insurance over in Switzerland. Again, I'm not 100% certain how insurance works in Switzerland. It's different in every country, but... Uh, in this case, 60% are being rejected. That is just unacceptable and not good. Now moving on to this back here in the United States. Public health officials confirm case of measles in Sacramento County, California. I did tweet this out. You can read the full story if you want to read more about this. And take a look at this. We've got to go to Thailand now. KP.2, this is from... Michael Olson is tweeting this out. And take a look here. You can see on this chart here, KP.2 is starting to impact Thailand. Take a look at this. At the end of April, yeah, there are cases, which are in blue here, some of new cases. They were really starting to go upward. So that is not a good thing to see. And now we have to go to Sweden, where it says risk of several years of brain fog after just mild COVID. Look, we have heard this several times before. Brain fog can be 
a big issue with people after COVID. You know, 20 to 30 percent going to develop long COVID, and a, a significant number of people do have the brain fog issue. And unfortunately, the more we are finding out about this, the more we are learning that it could last up to several years. Sweden, being infected with COVID can cause several years of brain fog, difficulty concentrating, and fatigue, even if you only had cold symptoms. So again, this goes out to the people who always say, oh, it, it, it's just the flu, it's just a mild cold, it's just cold. Okay, even if you've had mild symptoms, brain fog, it can become an issue for you. Yes, you, the common people that like to put down, it's just a cold, COVID's over, okay. Then explain to me if it's just a cold, why you might have new problems or having a brain fart or having brain fog or stop and say, oh, what was I just talking about? Yeah, it's a real it's a real issue, so please take this seriously. All right, moving on now. Taking a look at the national allergy map. Today is not a good day for allergies. 44% of the country is in medium to high status for pollen. You can see there's a ton of orange, and there's also a ton of red from just northeast of New York City through Connecticut, uh, most of Rhode Island. A good portion of Massachusetts, so at least southern New Hampshire, and almost all of Maine is in the red. Portions of the Plains, the upper Midwest, you're in red as well. Southern Plains are not doing too bad. Some yellows, even some greens, which represent low levels in Texas today. But generally, anywhere north of I-40, I guess we should say, is dealing with pollen problems today. Taking a look now at air quality values around the United States, I have to refresh this because every two minutes or so it grays out on us. We are seeing a few bad air quality spots out on the west coast and really not bad for the rest of the country unless you come down to southern Texas, extreme southern Texas, and portions of Florida like down around Miami, you are seeing some air quality issues today. All right, speaking on uh, Speaking of air quality, we want to stick on climate for a second because I want to start adding a couple climate things from time to time, things that could be life-threatening or that were life-threatening. And in this case, we have to read a headline out of Brazil. Flooding death toll in Brazil hits 126 as rain returns. Yes, this is a really a problem. I started uh, tweeting out about this earlier in the week on my climate Twitter at that point, I think it was up to 100 deaths, and then it went to 113. Now it's up to 126. The storms and floods battering the state, home to about 10.9 million people. So it's a state within Brazil. I mean, this is just not good. It's really bad, and guess what? They're going to see more rain, and take a look at this. People are now in crowded shelters, and of course, you know, this is a pandemic update, so you have to think about this as well. Crowded shelters together, I'm not seeing any masking, so uh, the risk of other viruses spreading, yes, that can be a real issue as well. Want to learn more about climate? We used to advertise our uh, climate channel, but Let's just advertise our climate Twitter now. It's at Climate Data Report. That's Climate Data Capital RPT, where I tweet about all things climate. Trying to get back into that once again. Again, we don't have time to talk about our climate channel or do anything on the climate channel. All right, back to health. And, well, this is health as well. EMS incident, 783 in Philadelphia yesterday. That is down slightly from before. We'll take that. But what we will not take is, check this out, and it's actually a little bit better than a few minutes ago. Uh, right before we started recording, Montgomery County, Pennsylvania had three cardiac arrest calls at once. There are still two, one in Royersford, one in Jenkintown, Pennsylvania. There is also a cardiac emergency. Again, sometimes it's not the volume of calls, it's the type of calls. And Chester County has seen its fair share of cardiac arrest calls today as well. There's one right now. In words for I believe that is the same call. So it looks like uh, Chester County is going out to help Montgomery County. But earlier, there were several cardiac arrest calls in Chester County, Pennsylvania. We're seeing multiple respiratory difficulties. Someone who's sick in Valley Township. So that's never a good thing. Taking a look at the Walgreens Respiratory Index for COVID, the national positivity trend this week shows the positivity rate is 14%. The prior week was 12.6%. That's a difference of up 1.3%. Total tests, 3,763. That's down from 3,941. And let's just do 
four states, shall we? Kentucky this week, the positivity rate was 7.5%. That's up by 2.8% from 4.7%. Total tests, 40 versus 43 testings down. So we'll say that's an increase because of testing. Taking a look at South Carolina. South Carolina, the positivity rate this week was 10.3%. The prior week was 3.8%. That's a difference of up 6.5%. Total test, 68 out of 80 so yeah that's that's much lower testing from last week and again positivity rate is up it could also be a combination of maybe a slight rise in cases because again that 6.5 percent is actually a relatively uh, significant increase now let's take a look at somewhere where things may be dropping louisiana 5.9 percent positivity rate this week 10.3 percent last week that is the difference of down 4.5 percent total test 17 versus 29 and i say we should go out to the west coast now or close to the west coast a bit further west utah positivity rate is improving 6.3 percent versus 12.9 percent that's down by 6.7 percent total test 32 versus 31 that is good to see biobot now we will do the full wastewater update tomorrow so look for that tomorrow but let's just quickly take a look at where we stand with biobot and the only region that is really rising not even rising that much, but it is rising, is the Northeast. The rest of the country at this point in time is not really seeing any rises. It's dropping. So it looks like uh, the Northeast at this time. That's the place where we would expect to see a rise first with a new variant. Again, we'll do a bigger wastewater update again tomorrow like we normally do on Sundays and we'll probably have a few news stories as well let's take a look at hospital capacity which we still can do at this time and across the United States we are seeing here that 74.1% uh, of inpatient beds are being used and when we come here to COVID-19 which we can do uh, separately they, they change this around on us 0.6% of the beds in the United States are being used for COVID at this time. What I am not seeing listed here, or at least not on this chart, let's go up, here it is, ICU beds. Okay, this is what I wanted to see. The number of ICU beds being used in the United States is at 68.7%, and this is new, percent of hospitals reporting in the United States at this time. Now, as of April 27th, it was 96.1%, but on the most recent data, which is incomplete, it's 91.1%. And that is just for hospitals in general. Can we look at COVID and patient bed occupancy for COVID? Okay, so we can look at the number of hospitals reporting for that. It's still saying 96.1%, and then it goes down to 91.1%. Okay, rather interesting. All right, taking a look at the epidemic status for COVID, which updated yesterday. We showed it yesterday, but if you didn't see yesterday's video, we're going to show it again. And there have been some changes here. You see, there's some purples here on the map now. That's not a good thing. And some pinkish purple or magenta, whatever color you want to call it. Take a look here. Growing status is now occurring in New York State, New Mexico, Oregon, and in Hawaii. Likely growing for COVID now is California, Nevada, Arizona, Colorado, Wisconsin, New Jersey, and Maine. Stable or uncertain is several states and not estimated is several states. COVID is likely declining in Virginia, Ohio, Indiana, and Nebraska at this time. And it is declining in North Carolina, Michigan, Kansas, and Mississippi. So there has been some changes. Again, we are dealing with the KP.2 variant, and it does make sense that we do see somewhat of a rise in some places, which the places that are definitely growing, listed as growing, are seeing a bit of a bigger rise than other places. Speaking of the KP.2 variant, here is the update for that. 28.2% and JN.1 is now at 15.7%. KP.2 did not have a significant rise, but it did go up. Why didn't it rise significantly? Remember when JN.1 came to town back during the winter surge? Well, the reason why that went up so quickly was because it was something that just overpowered everything. KP.2 does come with a lot of its friends. It brought its friends along too. And you can see here, they all want a piece of the action. All those other little variants are starting to say, well, hey, I want to rise too. So when you have so many variants rising at once, and none of them that are really 
terribly overpowering like JN.1 was, was back in the wintertime, you're not going to see something that just rapidly goes to the top, but we'll see. KP.2 will continue to rise. Will any of these other variants be a contender to go beyond it? I don't have an answer for that. I really don't know. Maybe someone more qualified knows. And quite frankly, the chatter I'm seeing on social media right now, as Twitter especially, is we're in an uncertain time. KP.2 for the foreseeable future, as far as we know, will be the dominating variant until something else comes along. I mean, this is the way this pandemic works. We've seen new variant after new variant after new variant since the pandemic has started. Who remembers Omicron? Which, KP.2, it, it is a sublineage of Omicron. Who remembers Delta, Alpha, Wuhan 1.0, you know, all these different variants. And eventually there will be something else that's not KP.2 that will be at the top. When that will be, I really don't know. All right, take a look at New Jersey today. Well, a whole bunch of nothing in New Jersey today. They decided not to report. It's a holiday weekend. Maybe they're not going to report tomorrow either. Taking a look at what's going on in New York State. I'll refresh this. Maybe by some chance they updated on Saturday. They didn't. 590 new cases yesterday. Taking a look at what is going on now in the hospitalization situation there. 432 hospitalizations. 29 people in the ICU. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Saturday edition of the Pandemic Update. We'll have another Pandemic Update again tomorrow with the latest wastewater data. Any news that pops up? And, hey, let me know down below. Do you like when I add a little climate story and talk a little bit about the climate down below? Let's face it, that is a threat to our lives as well. If it's something that's a threat to you, I intend to report on it. So let me know about that down below. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, you got to do a few things. Subscribe if you're new down below. Give this a thumbs up if you like this video. Again, let's try for 125 likes today. And share this with anyone you know. And, of course, leave those comments down below. I will see you all again tomorrow for the Mother's Day edition of the Pandemic Update. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Saturday evening. Thanks for watching.